Well, we begin today with breaking news in the world lead. Moments ago, President Trump told reporters he believes Iran takes his threats seriously and he does not need an exit strategy from the escalating confrontation. This comes after the president delivered an unmistakable threat to Iran's leadership, tweeting this morning that any attack on the U.S. will be met with, quote, great and overwhelming force and in some areas could result in, quote, obliteration. The comments a direct response to Iran's president saying that the mixed messages coming from the White House suggest a, quote, mental disability. As CNN's Boris Sanchez reports for us now, neither side is showing any signs of backing down. After deploying a round of threats on Twitter, President Trump insisting Iran takes his threats seriously. Man, they uh, take your threats seriously uh, now, Mr. President? I think everybody does. I think you do, too. Trump's maximum pressure campaign on Iran now getting personal. One day after Trump slapped Iran with new sanctions, Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, taunting the White House, questioning how Trump could simultaneously ask for talks with the regime. They do strange things that no sane person in the history of world politics has done, or at least I don't remember. This is because of their total confusion. The White House is suffering from mental disability. Trump firing back with a string of tweets, promising war if Iran targets any U.S. interests. Quote, Iran's very ignorant and insulting statement put out today only shows that they do not understand reality. Any attack by Iran on anything American will be met with great and overwhelming force. In some areas, overwhelming will mean obliteration. The new threat coming as sources confirm the U.S. military launched a major cyber attack on an Iranian proxy group last week. Trump today also repeated a claim that he has many Iranian friends and he wants the regime to get rid of their hostility. But the president also boasted that if the U.S. went to war with Iran, there would be no need for an exit plan. Do you have an exit strategy for Iran if war does break out? Uh, you're not going to need an exit strategy. <laughs> I don't need exit strategies. Jake, President Trump also making clear in an interview with Hill TV that he may consult with members of Congress if he decides to have an armed conflict with Iran, but that he does not need their approval. That may not sit well with some lawmakers, including uh, Kentucky Congressman Rand Paul, who says that he believes that any president has to act on foreign policy with Congress's approval. Jake. All right, Boris Sanchez, thank you so much. Uh, joining me now is Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. He serves on the Foreign Affairs Committee in the House. He also flew missions as an Air Force pilot in Iraq and Afghanistan. Congressman, thanks so much for you joining bet. us. You just heard President Trump say that he doesn't need an exit strategy when it comes to Iran. Uh, what's your reaction to that? I don't look too much into that. I, I'm not a big fan of foreign policy by Twitter, but I think the president in this case is right to actually be pretty tough in his talk. I mean, the reality is... Iran better not think that they can do what they did, for instance, to the drone last time. I, th I thought, frankly, the president should have struck in areas of Iran, at least with what they used, and, and hit them back. But the bottom line is, looking at this, you have to say, being tough in talk, I think, can keep them from maybe doing the next thing. And if all, all you have to do is look at 40 years of history of how Iran talks, and you know that all he's doing is matching their rhetoric. The, um, you said uh, that uh, you also heard President Trump say that he, he, he thinks that Iran uh, believes his threats. You just said that you think he should have uh, done a, you know, a proportionate strike back. I assume you, you agree with that, the proportionate. Um, what do you think the president should have done, given that you oppose his pulling back? So I, I, I don't take as much issue with the fact that he didn't strike. I would have, and I think they certainly deserved at least a you use it, you lose it kind of thing, whereas if you use equipment against our state, you're at least going to lose that. But I think when it comes down to it at the bottom line, the president uh, really should just kind of be ready to do what he needs to do. And so when I, when I see all that, I'm kind of like, you know, rhetoric, whatever that is, putting the troops in, whatever that is, and the strikes have got to stand by and be ready. I just want to double down on the question about an exit strategy for a second because yeah. you said you don't, you don't judge. The, he didn't say that on Twitter. He said it in person. And I think one of the things that the American people, left and right, can agree is that too often... Our leaders, whether they're in the Pentagon or the White House, uh, from both parties uh, or non, no party, take our fighting men and women like you, put you into harm's way, and there isn't an exit strategy. Yeah, I think if we get to a point where there's an armed conflict, then there needs to be an exit strategy for sure. There needs to be conditions for what victory looks like. There needs to be 
you know, whatever targets have to be taken out or whatever that final thing is. Uh, but when it comes down to it, it's, uh, I think in this case, with what we're looking at, is making it clear to Iran that if they threaten American interests like they've done for 40 years, if they continue to attack American troops, frankly, like they've targeted in Iraq, there's going to be a response that is going to be at the level of what it deserves to be. I don't think, and everybody that kind of jumps to this 300,000 troops in Iran is the next step, I don't think it is. I think there is a sliding scale of military response where the cost to Iran would exceed any damage they could do to us. And that in and of itself uh, can keep Iran from doing that because they know there's no gain for them in it. But when you talk about the sliding scale, you talked about how you would have advised a you use it, you lose it strategy. Iran fires on our drone, we fire on their missile base or whatever it was that, that, that took out our drone. Are you concerned at all that, that any military strike would escalate the conflict, ultimately leading to, to loss of life, both innocent Iranians, innocent Americans, innocent people in the region? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's always a concern. I think that's why the messaging to Iran has to be basically that proportional. If you use it, you lose it, because they know if they, re on, if they re react disproportionately or, frankly, react at all when they initiated the action, the back and forth, that we have bigger options sitting behind that we can use that we're not. So this is where basically that patience, that being clear about what our reaction will be, could actually be de-escalatory and I think, frankly, prevent Iran from making the kind of mistake they made last time. Keep in mind, Jake, shooting down that drone, it's not like your uncle's drone in the backyard. It's the size of an airliner and it's the equivalent in cost of destroying about eight F-16s. So this was a massive issue. The president, it was his determination not to strike, that's fine. Uh, but I think it now needs to be clear to Iran that there will be consequences. Iran said today they have no interest in obtaining nuclear weapons. Listen to what National Security Advisor John Bolton said regarding a desire to bring Iran to the negotiating table. The president has held the door open to real negotiations to completely and verifiably eliminate Iran's nuclear weapons program. All that Iran needs to do is to walk through that open door. Iran says they have never left the negotiating table. They're still in the Iran deal. It's the U.S. left that left. Yeah, but I think the, the point on this is very clear. So after Iran entered the deal, I wasn't a big fan of the deal. After they entered the deal, you constrain to an extent a nuclear weapon program for a finite amount of time. But what we saw immediately after that was a massive cash infusion into their expeditions all around the Middle East. You saw it in Syria, Yemen, uh, Lebanon, and elsewhere. And so what the president and his prerogative came in and said is, we're fine with a nuclear deal. It has to last longer. We're already halfway through, basically, when parts start expiring. But then on top of that, we have to ensure that you're not going to take any benefit and use it on these forays and attack American interests, allies, friends, et cetera. All right, Republican Congressman Adam McKinsinger, thanks for your time. As always, we appreciate it. You bet, Jake. See ya.